then we can start uh, slowly hmm? sure. so very good afternoon to all and welcome rishikesh and thank you uh, welcome everyone each and everyone who is here uh, today uh, again uh, before uh, introducing biodiversity cell and all to rishikesh and those who are new today uh, on our today's session i'm going to tell you that uh, this is a special session and i really congratulate rishikesh that we are going to introduce a uh, young talent in as, as means uh, students who are studying or who are just pass out and who are doing a fantastic work in wildlife and conservation so uh, from this month onward uh, one sunday will be reserved for such students uh so rishikesh is our first uh, expert on this session uh, and i'm really happy and excited to have rishikesh with us and he is going to talk about on a wonderful subject and which is very much new to me also so i'm also looking forward to this so rishikesh biodiversity cell uh, is a just 2 years old initiative on symbiosis university campus um as we are talking of, uh, on few instances on phone and even instagram in last 6 7 months and i'm always uh, you know uh, even telling you also to come and visit our campus because we also have a lot of biodiversity in terms of birds reptiles mammals and amphibians insects everything so uh, almost uh, all other things are uh, in the pro, uh, you know um, process of documentation uh, except mammals and insects insects may only butterflies and moths uh, otherwise nothing we have yet you know touched also and mammals uh, again uh, as you know um, the development and all everything encroachment and activity uh, human activity and uh, with this all it's always difficult to uh, document mammals but still with the help of camera traps we could uh, document barking deer uh, indian porcupine then civet cat uh, mongoose jungle cat uh, etc on our campus but uh, now henceforth we also wanted to uh, document and assess the impact of uh, footfall on the campus because it is increasing day by day what we started 4 years back or when i joined symbiosis in 2010 today is 2021 so in these years it's definitely had changed over the period so biodiversity cell had started just 2 years back and slowly we wanted to you know uh, explore and do things on biodiversity on this campus so this with this short um, introduction uh, the work will still going will still go on uh, in on the fronts of documentation uh, education and awareness and conservation with the help of students who are here today th those students who are biodiversity club members and those who will join our um these initiatives and people or uh, experts like you and students from other institutes and colleges who want to join us and we are going to uh, walk ahead on this ground so with this i'll uh, in, um, request ritu to take over and uh, introduce our expert thank you so much ma'am good evening to everyone on behalf of biodiversity cell symbiosis international deemed university pune I am Ritu Basin, a student of MSc Applied Statistics at Symbiosis Statistical Institute and a member of the Biodiversity Cell. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Sunday special session of Biodiversity Cell. This year, starting March 2021, every month for one Sunday, the cell will be inviting young talents from different colleges and universities across the nation as well as other countries. who are doing remarkable work in the field of wildlife and conservation on this platform to interact with us today we have among us as our invited speaker and a full time 22 year old post graduate student rishikesh va a very warm welcome to you rishikesh i also welcome respected ms shilpa avate officer biodiversity cell professor dr sharvari shukla director of symbiosis statistical institute staff members students and our audience present here born and brought up in the landscape junior maharashtra rishikesh grew up watching leopards in the landscape be it on the streets or his balcony intrigued by this he started venturing forests to explore more 
To give his passion an educational approach, he opted for zoology at Ferguson College, Pune, and is currently pursuing post graduation in environmental sciences. His main interests include wildlife, wildlife research and conservation. Side by side, he is working as a wildlife biologist with wildlife images and reflections and forest department of Maharashtra in the northern western guards of Maharashtra, surveying the ma mammal species present in these ranges by the camera trapping method. His experience includes research and conservation projects in India and is curious in carnivore ecology, specifically leopard biology. He has worked on diet patterns of leopards living in agro-pastoral landscape of Nifat, Nashik, Maharashtra. He has volunteered for various projects in India, including places like Rajasthan and Mumbai, for data collection and camera trapping projects to estimate leopard population. He has won first place at a nature conference in the Wild India Film Festival. Looking at his passion for, work, for working on non-protected areas to discover the unexplored diversity, Rishikesh will be speaking on the topic, Importance of Wildlife Outside Protected Area. Over to you, Rishikesh. So, uh, Ritu, thank you for such a detailed introduction. <laughs> so, uh, I'm really impressed. So, okay, uh, I'll start now. So, uh, as Ritu uh, introduced me, like I've been doing this work. So, uh, it was my not only passion, but curiosity also, like to understand these animals living in agri agriculture as well as outside the protected areas. So, I'll just start with my presentation and we'll just have a look. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it's visible. So, all right. So the topic today I will be talking about is wildlife and non-protected areas. So just uh, let us get this thing clear, like what are protected areas and non-protected areas? So many of us have heard about the status of different forests, like uh, wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, uh, or tiger reserves. So these are uh, forests which are administered by either the state forest departments or by the central government. So these are called as protected areas because these areas get protection on behalf of government. And what are non-protected areas? So non-protected areas are those forests which are on the fringes of these forests or which are in the form of reserved forest or sacred groups and many times agro, uh, agricultural landscapes also. So what is the importance of these uh, non-protected areas? So as we can see in this map, there are two yellow areas and between the two yellow areas, there is a green area. So this green area is called as corridor and in uh, a wildlife term, we call it as a wildlife corridor. So what exactly is corridor? So corridor is a patch of forest between two protected areas where animals use this to migrate. And why this is important? The main question is like, it helps to exchange the genetic population uh, or the gene pool of the animal species of two different protected areas. So this is all about like corridors and its components. So we, sorry, we'll talk about components. So the components are not uh, every time it is not compulsory that it, it should be a, a protected forest area. Many times it is agricultural landscape. So some of the famous examples we can see is uh, from like uh, the Indian gore or the elephants thriving in Valparai in uh, South India. So among, there are many animals who thrive on these areas. So there is also another animal called leopard which is my favorite animal. And I really like to uh, study this animal. So leopard is one of the uh, four species of cats or big cats, which is able to sustain itself in the agricultural landscape. And the reasons are it is very, very adaptable or uh, very adjusting to the environment. So uh, as uh, introduced by Rutu, I was born in Junnar. So Junnar is a landscape where we have a lot of leopards. Like uh, I have seen uh, leopards in our agricultural lands, in our backyards, many times lifting our cats and dogs. So that was 
a thing in my mind since my childhood that like where this where are these leopards living what are they eating and this curiosity i took to some next level and i proposed a research uh, while doing my bachelor's and for that i got a grant from department of biotechnology india and wildlife conservation society bangalore so what exactly i studied or what means i what is the term that i'm studying these leopards so my topic of uh, research was understanding the leopards diet in agro pastoral landscape so what exactly i mean like before getting into the topic i'll just uh, talk about an o- like a sweet and short overview of leopard biology so leopards are highly solitary animals like solitary means they prefer to live alone and their uh, habits or their living uh, living places range from dry deciduous forest till the lush gre- lush green green uh, rain forests so uh, like uh, yeah another question is like how individual leopards are identified so you know uh, like our fingerprint every thumbprint is different so leopards coat is different so these spots which we can see on his body it is called rosettes so every rosette pattern of uh, individual leopard is different and on that basis uh, wildlife researchers identify and uh, come up with the census of animals so you know uh, many times in you might have read in papers that there are 8000 leopards in india or there is a annual report so on what basis they do it is this method on which they identify each and individual leopard so we'll just understand the social structure of leopards so you know leopards social structure is very interesting so the main area or the prime area of uh, any particular forest or any landscape is under usually the control of the dominant male which is in middle and it is surrounded by other couple of females and outside or outside the areas of the females either it is shared by their daughters or any other leopard who who have established its territory over there so you know many times there are sightings of leopards in many landscapes so people are scared to death to be honest they want they are they are like what will happen if he attacks on us but what the actual story of this is like they force forest department people to put up the trap uh, cages to trap the animal but is that a real solution for this so my answer is no because as we just saw the social structure of leopards earlier so it is it never happens that if a leopard is removed and the problem is solved the empty territory is replaced by another leopard it like itself so in many condition in many cases uh, what happens that uh, what forest department do is they trap a leopard from a particular area and they just release back in some random location so it is not the actual solution so what happens in 90 cases 90% of the cases these animal migrate back to their own territory and again that area is filled so the problem is not diffused so the best best way is to let that animal live there because it is not harming anyone it is just having a peaceful coexistence with other human beings and we should let that animal live there so another uh, just this is a short uh, story of a leopard called azoba so i don't know many, like any of you are aware about this story so this uh, a leopard was fallen in uh, a well in junnar so later it was rescued and it was put a gps collar so what uh, you can see a collar around its neck so what this collar does is uh, it gives you the uh, whereabouts about that leopard so like where it is exactly at that point and what is his uh, next move or you can basically track him with technology so that individual leopard called azoba was uh, radio collared and even he was put a small chip uh, near his tail which is called as microchip in which there are details about like uh, where this leopard is trapped or the history of the leopard where it is found how it was found and it is it remains in his tail it is like an identity card of leopard so it was put and then back released somewhere here near this yellow yellow spot so this is something which i t- just talked 2 minutes earlier like uh, this leopard started 
was released here in Marshes Ghat in Junnar, and then he started his journey to something he knew, like he started migrating towards a city area, and you can see these dots. These directly can tell you that it is somewhere near Mumbai. So this leopard migrated from Marshes Ghat to Mumbai. Like the distance is one twenty kilometers, and he covered it in twenty nine days. So it is a like it is very fascinating. Like why was he doing that? So the answer is it might be that he might be re released at some other place, and he's back to his. He's just. on uh, like he's on his return journey we can say and on his journey he crossed industrial estate of wasai he even crossed he even swam the creek and then after all he settled in a forest called sanjay gandhi national park in mumbai and 3 years later he died so what this story tells you that uh, capturing a leopard from a particular area and releasing him somewhere else is not the solution he will try to go back in that in his territory itself so this is just an a basic introduction about what leopards uh are like how leopards behave and let's get back to our topic like i said that uh, understanding the uh, diet patterns of leopards in agro pastoral landscape so this is map of maharashtra and the red highlighted area was my study area nifar so what does the term agro pastoral landscape mean so agro pastoral landscape means uh, that the uh, the primary uh, livelihood for these people the farmers is agriculture and pastoralism so this area nifad my study area is blessed with uh, a very good uh, river called uh, godavari and its tributaries so because of very rich um, fertile land and abundance of water the uh, crops cultivated here are usually cash crops like sugarcane bajra onions and uh, vineyards or grapes so what or uh, what role this landscape plays in having leopards is uh, you can see like sugarcane provides a very good uh, shelter for leopards to live and uh, sugarcane being an annual crop this is cultivated all year round so it being an annual crop leopard is always having a very good area to hide a very good shelter to live in so this makes uh, leopard more prone to live in agricultural landscape and another is uh, another uh, revolutionary uh, feature of this landscape is the construction of canals so the canals have reached to such areas that uh, where there was no water earlier so even these this areas have started cultivating different types of agricultural cash crops and which indirect which directly give shelter to leopards and uh, which means like more water means more agricultural land more agricultural land means more leopard and its population so another uh, major livelihood in this uh, area is the pastoralist community called dhangar so these are nomadic tribes where they just uh, rear the uh, sheep and goats and they live on the uh, by products of their uh, of their cattle and yes so my topic was like why to study diet first it was my curiosity like why i want why i wanted to study it was curiosity like how and where about the leopard is having what it is eating and the research approach of this particular topic was understanding the types of interaction between the animal as well as man so you know the feeding type can tell you a lot about the interactions between the between the animal and man in that particular landscape and second is animal and animal interactions so what exactly that leopard is eating and another feature is like types of prey available so many times uh, we don't know what exactly that we like we being a normal layman what we might have thought that yes he might be eating dogs or he just might be eating any deer species but you know this landscape is having no single sign of deer or any ungulate species in and around that particular area so which which you know which just challenges your mind like what exactly then that leopard is eating and you know the method which we used 
just this is for just information it is also used in forensics wildlife forensics uh, like how uh, forest departments or biologist uh, describe or uh, title the animal man eater so uh, the poop of animal if it is having animal uh, like the genes of man or any uh, remnants of flesh or bone then on that basis analyzing the scat or poop the respective results are taken out like whether he is not uh, like man eater or not and that is a very big decision for an animal to like you know if we just randomly title any animal that it is a man eater so he will be jailed for his lifetime and that is fault at our end not his end because just consider if he was not not a man eater and he just put it put behind the bars how it how it would be like you have just ruined the life of a leopard which is a apex predator controlling the cycle or the umbrella species of that particular landscape controlling the whole level of uh, below ecosystem so that is about like why to do and you know what is scat uh, so and how to identify it so scat is exactly a poop of animal or this leopard and how do you identify it like uh, you know uh, when leopards hunt its prey Uh, first what they do is they lick their prey to clean the hair samples uh, or the hair of that animal present on his body so what happens that when he licks the licks that uh, licks the body of that animal he ingests that hair samples and these hair samples are never uh, digested by the animal so that, uh, these hair samples are directly came out in form of uh, remnants or uh, an evidence like what he is eating and how do you identify a scat of leopard you know uh, when leopard uh, poops we can say so he he is ha- like the scat is having a pointed tip at the end and even there are scrape marks around around that uh, scat or poop It, basically he just poops like a house cat you might have observed like how how a house cat poops like when she poops she just scrapes the land and then she leaves so yes that is all about how scat is identified and what was my methodology of uh, you know uh, doing this study so you can see this map uh, so this blue line is called transect so is it visible yes so yes yes uh, it is visible so the uh, model i used uh, was a random analysis or random sampling method many of the statistics students even might know about this so there is always a chance or a probability through some models and that was the random probability model which i used in this particular uh, survey so i uh, distributed the la- uh, landscape by uh, surveying it through the line transects so line transects okay line transects are the lines along uh, on the surface of the landscape and how do we do that like first step is scat collection so we walk along the line transects uh, and identify the samples then we collect and this these gps coordinates are marked and these uh, gps coordinates are marked because uh, it tells about that particular uh, interaction of that area or the leopard who have been into that area and his diet preferences so i did a lot i i did a very vast survey along the landscape so it would have been difficult right for me to understand like what was with sample so we marked those samples and we even marked it with gps coordinates so next method is washing the scat so uh, the scat uh, the scat is having the digested material as well as non digested material so when a leopard poops uh, there is a whole lot level of uh, what we can say bones and hair samples with it there is also uh, some remnants of uh, his food which he had eaten earlier so what we do is we just wash that uh, like scat and we just separate the hair samples bones and the undigested part for analysis and after that we dry that particular uh, hair sample and after that we do laboratory analysis so um, how or uh, why to do laboratory analysis 
you know laboratory analysis is the key feature of this study like uh, lab lab work which i did was uh, preparing of permanent slides and identifying the hair samples like what do i mean by preparing of the hair slide hair slides so you can see me uh, separating some samples right with forceps so uh, what i did was uh, like there is also a basic scientific protocol of doing that so among the uh, poop sample you have to just pick up some random about 30 samples and you have to mount it on the slide and you can uh, you have to observe it under the microscope so yes so this is like my results or the gist of my work so i made uh, some uh, permanent slide like this and as we as we know like every hair sample is having uh, like women might know right there is cuticle and it should not be disturbed like it should not get ruined then the health of the hair is maintained so even the animal the hair of the animal is having also a small uh, basic pattern that is cuticle cortex and medulla so every animal or every individual animal is having a different medullary pattern you know like a uh, dog is having a different medullary pattern uh, goat is having different medullary pattern and on that basis i did a statistical analysis through which uh, i had counted the number of uh, hair samples or the animals which he had eaten earlier and i noted them down so what my results was uh, shockingly i found that there are 10 different species of wild as well as domestic animals uh, which consist of leopard spray in the landscape of nepal so it there was bengal fox uh, small indian civet grey mongoose palm civet uh, langur field rat small indian mongoose wild boar goat cow dog buffaloes cat pig mule and sheep you know and even there were uh, like uh, the species of birds in it like uh, some uh, some samples of peacock or hen or chicken call, which we call so what this uh, taught me or what this uh, analysis or results taught me was uh, when leopard particularly with respect to this uh, landscape it was not that leopard was exclusively feeding on the domestic diet he was even trying to feed on the uh, wild animals or the wild diet also which was present in the agricultural landscape you know uh, nifard is having a very rich uh, soil to uh, soil for cultivation of sugarcane so there uh, no one have no one have noticed it yet that even sugarcane is having a lot of uh, good population of civet and uh, this this civet cat uh, or to be specific palm civet was the majority of its diet in this landscape and next was dog and then after it was sheep and goat and after all it was just the number was decreasing so uh, what the key feature of this landscape was like it is not that leopard always goes for the domestic animal even he is having some wild prey in that landscape and he prefers that so yes uh, this is all about uh, what i got in my results and you know uh, these are some photographic evidences of leopard actually eating uh, the domestic diet so this uh, this is uh, this footage is uh, from uh, sanjay gandhi national park where uh, the leopards are living very close with uh, humans and these are some glimpses of that so yes uh, another i have an interesting story uh, which also tells like how intelligent and how uh, smart or cunning these animals are so uh, like while we were walking once on our uh, trail or transect uh, we just came across a path or a road where we found some good pug marks of leopard so uh, you know at this uh, at this upper end there was a road and where we found some good tracks of a female leopard and examining it closely we were hoping for more uh, indirect signs we can see 
so while walking there was also a uh, nala or a dry uh, canal just right next to parallel to that uh, road so uh, one of my friends saw a pug mark of female leopard there also so when we got down into that nala we saw that there was a leopard uh, a leopardess uh, the pug mark of a female leopard and her cub so you know what this situation tells you is like she used to uh she used to walk alone on the road and she used to take her uh, younger one or her cub through the safest path because he should not he should not be scared of vehicles or uh, even dogs because they bark a lot and this being a very small cub it might have been scared and at the uh, end of this uh, nala there was a bridge and there was a busy, uh, busy road and under that bridge uh, bridge there was a pipe through which she used to take her cub on the other side so you know you can just think of a leopard being so smart and cunning at the same way and this is what leopard tells or teaches you to be very adaptable of uh, be to be very adaptive of the condition and to learn or uh, imbibe or to just Understand the landscape well and master it. So, Rishikesh, so, uh, in this picture, yes, uh, we are seeing only a mother uh, leopard pug mark, right? Pug mark, yes, ma'am. Uh, that is. So, I I was having that photo, but it in that also it was dry bed, right? And the weight of that baby was very light, so it was okay. hardly visible. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. But we were able to figure it out and read it. yes ma'am this is all so we we can have an interactive session about like question and answer all or even uh, there might be some doubts about uh, what my methodology was or what was what uh, different ways i used to do so we can go ahead with it so yeah thank you uh, actually uh, rishikesh i must may uh, say or mention that this this was really a uh, very interesting session <laughs> means we never ha had a session where uh, we spoke about carnivore yet hmm? uh, and uh, may it be a tiger leopard but so this is our first session where someone has uh, spoken and uh, elaborated their uh, work and study about uh, any cat and why not leopard and i usually many people ask uh, me also that aapke campus mein leopard hai kya to ek bar vidyatre ma'am it is my question also <laughs> and ek bar vidyatre ma'am had come to our campus for a nature in focus uh, that uh, festival and she said that ki uh, शिल्पा आपके वीडियो कैमरे में नहीं आया है अभी तक कैमरा ट्रैप में बाकी सारे आए लेकिन ये नहीं है सो ही शी सेड डोंट अंडर एस्टिमेट दिस कैट ही माइट हैव कम एंड गॉन एंड आपको पता भी नहीं चलेगा सो या वी डोंट नो यट कैमरा ट्रैप में तो नहीं आया है एंड देन वी एक्चुअली सीरियसली टेली we haven't done any you know, systematic scientific study like uh, now i came to know uh, from your uh, session that collection of poop uh, and uh, you know even the transact which we can do for even mammal study i never knew this means I, it never occurred to me uh, i'm i'm especially myself i'm a bird person so my study started from bird so for birding i know transact but same thing you can do for mammals also like for transact you are watching for birds na right and left uh, yes, mammals mein kya dekhna hai transact mein i was like that so poop okay yes ma'am and even uh, jo aapne bola ki uh, leopard aake bhi gaya hoga so uh, when i was uh, interning in uh, sanjay gandhi national park so uh, what uh, the what my guide or uh, told me or even or even we had observed that in our camera traps that there was a female with her cub and she used to uh, walk on that particular trail where we used to uh, place our camera traps so you know that uh, she was having her cub with uh, her while uh, walking on that trail what she used to do she used to 
just uh, go off the trail go be, uh, go from behind of that camera trap and again re- like again yeah. start to walk on that same trail so you know these animals are very intelligent they know so it is just that we have to be lucky enough and also we have to use some precise methods to right. trap them in our cap- uh, cameras so i guess uh, uh, students who are here uh, you can uh, ask any questions or if you want to even interact with your own uh, exper- uh, experiences or if you want to do anything similar like rishikesh uh, rishikesh even you can uh, tell us more about your voluntary work also okay uh, so uh... uh currently uh, i am a part of a uh, team working in western ghats so uh, i have talked with silpa ma'am also that we we'll, uh, we'll take a different session on that so what exactly work we are doing in western ghats is uh, we are doing some initial uh, data collection for mammals present in western ghats and again the topic is same non protected areas the theme is same so uh, we are doing their extensive surveys and for that we also need volunteers to um, you know come on field and help us so maybe uh, this summer or uh, when we'll again start our work our camera trapping exercise we'll love to have volunteers from symbiosis itself because you people are having some background also like from symbiosis biodiversity cell and yeah that's all so students you you can ask anything if you want to ask rishikesh please go ahead okay all right i'll i have got a photo also so uh, you know uh, when i was uh, doing surveys in this landscape so many times uh, i used to walk from uh, morning to till evening so it was very hectic at sometimes and uh, many times the landscape was very uh, uncertain so uh, like i used to go off the grid then i i wanted to get back on the grid so there were many large uh, agricultural fields in between which i could not cross with my vehicle but there were also some very good people who used to let me drive my vehicle through their uh, farms and this is one of the photo where uh, i have drove a lot in the vineyards of nashik and yes uh, acknowledge in acknowledgments even dr vidyatriya was my guide nikit survey anukriti ma'am and of course uh, mrunal rusarkar these all people have guided me in this project and it have been a successful project for me to understand the interactions of leopards with humans and yes that's all yeah okay. and thank you okay yeah team if you have any question you can start with hi rishikesh mehak this side so i just wanted to know more about uh, the methodology and uh, uh, about it what uh, you have used and uh, also you have talked about the statistical methods so can you just tell me more about it uh, okay so uh, the methodology which i talked about was the random sampling method right so uh, random sampling method is uh, such method where uh, you have to go with probabilities and uh, you have to just uh, distribute the landscape evenly to cover the landscape uh, what we can say precisely by getting the exact results what you want and uh, the statistical method uh, which i used here was like as i told you i used to mount uh, hair samples on those slides so i used to take a mean of uh, mean of those samples like i used to take 30 and i used to take mean of 30 and i used to come to my uh, results and i used to consider it as my first reading and yeah so that's the statistical approach that i did okay thank you so much yeah i do not have any questions as such but personally it was the first time that i've heard about leopards since so detail that i'm i'm really uh, you know uh, happy and uh, thrilled by listening to what uh, rishikesh has said and 
honestly now this has intrigued my personal interest to look more about uh, you know to study more about leopards because personally i never uh, studied about uh, the cat family um, and i'm not into uh, you know i'm not into so much work as rishikesh and ma'am is but i personally like uh, the presentation a lot and you explained it very well to a person who does not know anything about uh, the leopard so this was my personal take away okay. thank you uh, so yes uh, students and ritu uh, rishikesh was very much concerned uh, that uh, all scientific terms and everything uh, students may get bored and all i said no you carry on whatever scientific terms you use those terms and talk about so i guess it was not difficult at all it was a no, really nice presentation not at all it was very easy to understand and i could understand each and everything from your presentation that is why i do not have any questions as such because i could understand everything and uh, i really liked the uh, methodology and everything uh, that you talked about so thank you so much thank you so uh, with this i can even suggest uh, ritu and other students uh, who have uh, got some curiosity after uh, listening to rishikesh uh, if not leopard but uh, simbasis university campus uh, has civet cats mongoose uh, jungle cat uh, and 3 uh, 5 uh, years back uh, we used to have hyenas also uh, in anara So Rishikesh, what happened? Uh, four and a half years back, we had constructed a wall around our campus. It's a physical wall, and it's quite big wall. Uh, so again, Vidya Ma'am said, Vidya Tre Ma'am said that uh, leopard ko wall se kuch nahi hai. He may jump, so uska kuch nahi hai. He may have come and gone. But hyena, barking deer. uh you know these animals jungle cat ha huh, they uh, may get hindered by the this physical wall so she guided us and then girish punjabi also helped us and we created eco passages through these walls huh? mm-hmm. so uh, after I means uh, it's a 350 acres campus and the whole wall is around that campus so we made this eco passages from uh, uh, almost after 50 or 70 meters uh and uh, that's why i think maybe uh, barking deer jungle cat and porcupine uh, they may be uh, coming and going in and out and it's a, it's a now a, we can say a conservation uh, mode of uh, keeping corridor alive for uh, mammals hmm? so ritu and others uh, we ha- uh, what we uh, how we documented hyenas and jungle cats first we documented them through poop only scats so that time we never had four years back we did not have camera traps with us so when i started documentation uh, it was just uh, you know like a walk in the forested area and then we collected poop and scat and we send it to mostly all my uh, images and i send it to girish punjabi and then he confirmed uh, to us that it's a jungle cat or it's a hyena so after that we haven't done anything so that's it ha <laughs> ah, ho gaya char saal pehle hai na ye do teen poop mile the jungle cat ka mila tha hai hamare paas aage kuch uska pata bhi study nahi hai so uh, whatever we are doing right now is mostly about birds reptiles amphibians but good uh, at least students they are doing it on campus when they were in the campus due to covid 19 now everything is stopped but this new thing has started like interaction and spe- sunday special sessions where we are meeting people like you uh, which were which was very uh, means it was not in this scale uh, so that is a good thing happened but on field work uh, i really want students to let's see when uh, you all will be on campuses and then we can meet again and meantime still rishikesh uh, you and uh, others you please guide us uh, and i personally will uh, come to you and other people for help and um, my work is still going on so i go to campus every day since uh, june 2020 so i was at home for two months two and a half months last year march to may and then from 1st of june i am going to campus every day and there are few uh, students later after september and october they are also visiting our campus 
so i really would like to take it ahead especially for mammals so i think your session has triggered that you know push that let's do something about mammals also on the campus <laughs> Uh, apart from camera traps ne to ek ek camera trap wahan pe laga diya ha aayega aayega dekhte hai abhi kab jab aayega tab usme and you know ma'am like uh, i guess like you guys should start uh, documenting mammals also because you know it will te- uh, it will help you learn a lot about the biodiversity around of course you know the biodiversity well but when you just uh, try and study that animal you get to learn a lot of interdisciplinary things also as well so right. i would also uh, like to help you guys uh, there in documenting mammals so, so i i'll yeah. tell i'll really request uh, students who are from pune like viren and uh, uh, you know siddhant and there are few other students uh, please understand uh, this this importance and uh, spare your sundays apart from your bird photography to this part of work also these students they say ma'am ko hamare bird photography se bahut ye hai so it's not like that i love your photography i like it uh, but i really want you guys to even come and study in the campus help me out so yeah so any other questions uh, yes ma'am yes i have a question uh, like it's not a question but it's more like opinion centric a thing to rishikesh i want to ask uh, like we actually understood the interaction of uh, there's also a negative interaction like we have seen many news uh, news that uh, in mumbai usually leopards have entered uh, this house and they uh, took away someone like something like that so uh, since he is so much into this stuff like are there any sort of conservative things that are or measures that have been taken to uh, avoid this or to at least control this yes yes definitely like uh, i would say that you asked the question of my interest <laughs> so uh you know uh, there are three things in this uh, particular question first is uh, the responsibility of uh, animal which is taken by forest department as i told you guys earlier that there were many uh, falls uh, not falls but uh, there were captures of animal from one single place and they used to be uh, released at some di- something some different place so what used to happen you know these leopards uh, used to get stressed out so it's like uh, you are picked up from your home and you are just sent or you are just dumped at very random location where you don't know where you'll get food where you'll get water and at this point the leopard is very confused is very confused and that that is the time where the negative interactions happen like uh, sometimes he may attack uh, like he may attack a human or uh, any animal because he is not having any idea of that area and the easy food he is getting is standing in front of him so first thing is that that uh, the false uh, or the uh, wrong captures and release, uh, releases of the animal should be should not be practiced second thing is uh, with respect to uh, sanjay gandhi national park i have been active volunteer there for about two or Three years, I can say, and the researcher working there is also my guide and very good friend of mine. So you know, I have seen Sanjay Gandhi very closely. So just imagine, uh, don't imagine, but actually there are fifty leopards in Sanjay Gandhi National Park, and they are living with uh, something population of about two thousand or sixteen sixteen uh, thousand people per square kilometers. So you can just, uh, you know, you can just. Uh, compare the ratio of the pressure uh, pressure of the people on that particular forest but instead of uh, but in spite of that these animals are also trying to survive at the coexist at their best in that particular landscape and third thing is which you said that are there any conservation initiatives so there uh, was a project launched by uh, mumbai forest department uh and uh, project wagoba uh, the project was called as uh, mumbai cars for sgnp so in this what uh, what these people did was uh, first they targeted the crowd which was the uh, 
or the which was very vulnerable to get or to interact with the these animals or who used to get in touch with these animals so first thing was they did uh, awareness sessions because awareness is the key of avoiding the negative interactions and conflict which we uh, which we uh, popularly termed term it as so yes there are conservation initiatives and even if anyone of uh, anyone who is attending this session is from mumbai you can even uh, join the camera trapping team also so you know the camera trapping team in sanjay gandhi is also made of city volunteers also so you know they have a very good understanding and they know exactly what happens so there is no misunderstanding between the uh, the movements or the behaviors of leopard as well as the people so you know these people actually know or st- have started uh, to understand that uh, what are the exact causes and what are the precaution or what are the measures to be taken and yes they are doing it at the best and i would say the project uh, mumbai cause for agnp is a hit project and the impact are also amazing you can even google about it and you will get to know a lot of a lot of information about it thank you so much for explaining this clearly like now i have a pretty well idea about it thank you yeah welcome uh, i had a question uh, so you mentioned about camera traps so could you explain the process you follow while setting up a camera trap and how do you decide ki this is the place where i want to set up the camera yeah sure again this is like my interest uh, my favorite question so you know last 3 years i have been doing extensive camera trapping in uh, raj i have even worked in uh, jhalna uh, which is in uh, rajasthan then in sgnp then uh, now also in western ghats so uh, what i will tell is uh, there is a method of setting a camera trap so first is uh, you have to identify your or uh, what is your uh, focus like what species you want to focus so first is that objective second is uh, walking on the trails you get a lot of indirect uh, tracks and signs uh, which we call uh, like which are uh, pug marks or poop samples or the scrape marks or scratching of a leopard or uh, sloth bear on trees so these are uh, indirect tracks and signs which you can read on the floor of the forest so when you are uh, very uh, not very but very good observing person you'll get to know that there was a movement about some while ago or maybe some days ago so first thing is you have to read the forest floor very very uh, precisely and then uh, you have to plan that uh, what in what season you are doing it so the best uh, best part of the camera trapping is you can do it in summers on water holes so water hole is the best location where you can you know get the animals easily because there is water scarcity all all around and they will come to that particular water hole itself and they'll get camera trapped in that and yes so there are three factors as a three to four things which are we have to which we should keep in focus first is objective that what you want second is reading the for, uh, forest floor very Uh, precisely and uh, third is uh, the location that either it be a water hole or the busiest trail on the forest in the forest and even uh, if you have you have just asked this question there is even you know uh, the process of uh, placing the camera traps so if you want to uh, do census of uh, but some individual animals like leopard or tiger or even small cats so you have to place it opposite to each other where you can get the flank images so the side or the side profile is called as flank on that basis you can identify each and indiv- each individual and from that you can do a census of whatever species you want okay thank you so much welcome any other question anyone has okay 
then i guess uh, we can end the session if anyone has any question they can connect to shikesh he is on instagram also and uh, if you have any question you can come to me also and i'll connect you with uh, uh, rishikesh or any uh, experts related to that sector so uh, i'll uh, just request everyone to open their videos uh, so we can take one screenshot uh, and uh, riti ritu you can go for a vote of thanks also now please open your videos thank you rishikesh ko bhi thoda acha lagega you know when you'll see the faces <laughs> rishikesh i am very proud of you in such a young age you are doing lots of work and uh, almost from last 3 4 years just finished your graduation and already you have done so much so good luck best of luck no, just, just doing my my end to protect these species and uh, you know uh, i'll just say thank you to all of you especially shilpa ma'am uh, for uh, like getting me here because you know uh, interacting with uh, the youngsters like me i'm not very old i'm just 21 years old and like you but it is very uh, very what we can say impactful i can say for you as well as me because it is a platform where we are exchanging our ideas or where we are learning about some different things and which will of course benefit the nature and conservation of it so actually i'm very thankful of all who came and attended so yeah thank you thank you so much rishikesh now uh, we thank you for sharing your insightful thoughts on the importance of wildlife outside protected protected areas specifically about the leopard The session was indeed enjoyed by all. I would like I would also like to offer heartfelt gratitude to Shilpa ma'am for her support. The director of the Mysore Statistical Institute, Professor Dr. Sharvari Shukla, for her constant encouragement, the technical team, the student committee and all the audience for joining us today. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you. So, thanks Rishikesh. Thank you ma'am. Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you again. Yes, so <laughs> next sunday we will be meeting again another uh, 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 next sunday is it's a, it's a quite little bit of different kind of session you are going to have uh, so uh, i'm not going to tell more about it itna hi bataungi ki it's it's something different than forest and land and all so uh, come for next sunday session again and that's it have a nice sunday uh, thank you thank you everyone thank you uh, ma'am uh, thank you mrunal anandi those who are from not from symbiosis and from outside and have come and attended this session thank you everyone and thanks thank, thank you ma'am ma thank you rishikesh yeah thank you thank you hi ainik hi ma'am and by the way i'm coming on coming when you are coming to campus uh 26th of march now uh, <laughs> my report is negative so we all are negative right now <laughs> covid 19 ne saron ko pura lock kar diya hai everywhere theek hai chalo take care and see you soon bye bye guys Bye, bye, ma'am. Bye, and thank you. Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Ritu, uh, Shreeman, Disha, and Mahak. Yes. Fantastic. Very good job. Huh? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so ma'am. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Bye,